11. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. We are only 11 Patreon members away from our next major milestone. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, all Patreon members will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 20% off their orders to Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Tackle, 10% off Tiger Crankbait, 10% off Contactin Rods. You'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, weekly giveaways, and of course, private membership only content. We are only 11 members away from the next major milestone. For more information, check out the link in the episode description, head on over to our Patreon. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. This is a little special announcement just to let everyone know we're only going to have one episode dropping this week due to the Memorial Day weekend. But fear not, next week we get back to our regular scheduled programming. We'll have a podcast episode dropping Monday morning. And then for Monday Night Live, starting at 7 p.m., we are going to have on the major YouTuber Bass Geek. Again, Bass Geek is going to be our big big, big guest for this coming Monday Night Live starting at 7 p.m. And then we'll have a couple more podcast episodes dropping next week. Again, this week because of Memorial Day, it got a little goofed up, so only one episode of the show is dropping. And then next week, we'll be back to our regular scheduled programming. Enjoy the episode. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons, and it's that wonderful time of year again in the Maryland, Virginia area where there's about 3,800 tournaments on the Potomac River. And I am here with the winner of the Northeast BFL Division, Dr. Daniel Gray. Thank you so much for coming on, Daniel. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here. So, I mean, just to get the 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 hundred pound gorilla out of the room now, doctor, what, what did you get your uh, doctorate in? Chiropractic. I was a chiropractor for uh, twenty seven years here in my hometown, Butler. Oh wow! And I just That's retired last time. year. Yeah. What made you get into that? <laughs> Um, my family always went to chiropractors. I mean, not on a regular basis, but you know, my dad was, a he was a, uh, welder and stuff like heavy highway. And, uh, so, it, you know, you put something out of place and stuff you'd go. And I remember the first time I went, I was probably about 15 or 16, you know, I was working out and I popped the rib out and it was like hard to breathe and everything like that. And I went down to the local chiropractor and he lead me over and popped it and popped the rib back in it was like instant relief like that you know it was just so you know so yeah i mean uh you know it's funny because like over the years i've had patients come in you know or, or talking to people you know yeah you know and they're like oh i don't believe in chiropractic i'm like what do you mean you don't believe in it you know what i mean it's like things go out of place you put them back in that's all we're doing you know uh but it's kind of funny uh you know, I used to like, oh, no, you know, try to talk him into it. And then after that, I was like, hey, you know, everybody makes their own decisions. You know, that's fine. You know, do what you want to do. But um, but how I got into it, yeah, my family went there. So, you know, I went there. And uh, um, when I got out of high school, I uh, – it's funny because I went to Bo Tech in high school. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was uh, auto body. And then I uh, I went to the Air Force, uh, ended up being a sergeant in the Air Force. I was an airframe repair specialist on the uh, on the jet fighters, so everything that you know riveting and stuff like that, everything on there uh, I would do. And then when I got out of there, I was going to be a pilot. I was taking pilot classes while I was in the Air Force, uh, and I was taking college classes at night. And I actually got I love the Air Force, and I actually got out to uh just to finish my college because it was taking so long taking night classes and stuff and um then when i went to graduate or when i got out was getting out of the service i was already accepted to salem college of aviation it was in west virginia i don't even think it's there anymore oh, wow. but uh, uh but when i got out it just so happened that that's when the twa everything was failing there and all the pilot strikes and it was a big mess and pilots, and pilots weren't making that in, in much more money back then anyways but that's what i wanted to do um 
so I was like, what do I want to do? Do you know, do I want to put four years into this and, you know, uh, and not know what a future is to hold and stuff like that. So I actually transferred to uh, Penn State and uh, into their aerospace engineering program. And then once I got there and did my first semester, I changed my major to pre-med. And then, you know, uh, it helped getting, uh, I, I got a partial scholarship through the National Science Foundation for grades. And, you know, um, it's a little easier, like, you know, once you, uh, you know, right out of high school would have been a little tougher for me, you know. But once you live life a little bit and come back, you kind of, put things in perspective a little bit and try a little harder. Um, but uh, yeah, then after that, I, mm. yeah. Wow. And then I, like I said, I, I went to, uh, I changed my major to pre-med at Penn state and uh, yeah. But then once I did some rounds with some doctors, I, I knew I didn't want to do the actual medical side and being coming up from, uh, you know, uh, family that went to chiropractors and stuff. I went to chiropractic school uh, out in St. Louis, Missouri, Logan College of Chiropractic. How does fishing fit into this crazy lifestyle? Because you could already write a biography on this story alone. <laughs> uh, you know, my uh, my uh, chiropractic college uh, actually did an article on me about that, about the science of fishing and chiropractic. And it was, Dude, I really? don't know, it That's was, cool. you know, they, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was something else. Um, yeah, it was pretty good, but uh, how's it fit in? Uh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. I just always love fishing and I think it's them from, um, like, you know, my dad wasn't a big fisherman or nobody like that. You know, my uncle, he liked to walleye fish and stuff, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, back in the day on Sundays, you went to visit your grandparents. You know, that's what you did. Well, my grandparents lived up in Hilliards, Pennsylvania, which there wasn't a paved road within like six miles of their house. And there's nothing to do. But my when my mom went up to visit her mother, you know, me and my brothers would be out there like, what are we going to do here? You know, and but my aunt lived right up the road and they had a beautiful little pond up there, you know, maybe like a two acre pond. So I started just taking my fish and rowing up and spending, you know, and then you're used to the pond. You see some of the bass rising up, you know, they had a little floating dock out there, you know, and just trying to trick them, trying to figure out, you know, how to get, how to get them to bite, you know, how to, how to trick them into the, and that's how it all started. I mean, I loved going up there then, you know, I, I'd take my fish, for, yeah, for, I'll go up there, you know, and I just fish the same pond and stuff. And I mean, I had so many good memories up there, you know, um, but, uh, it, it just, you know, it just kind of held with me my whole life, you know, just, just fishing, you know, uh, fishing for different things, you know, whether it was going tuna fishing or uh, just going out crappy fishing, you know, so. When you know, did you get, when did you get bit with the, the bass fishing tournament bug? When, when did you really make that journey into your life? Oh, man. Uh well, since I was moving around so much, I, I never really had a uh, boat and stuff like that. So when I got out of the um, when I got out of the service, I come home and I bought a little boat at a flea market. There was a flea market down by my house, and it was just like a little twelve foot. We had a little uh, five horse Clinton motor, but it, it was tough because I my Clinton motor had hydrophobia, so. It would run great at the garage, and then when I put it in the water, it wouldn't start. You know, it was afraid of the water. So, you know, I spent a lot of time paddling that thing around, you know. But going out to some of these little lakes and just, you know, didn't have a good depth finder or nothing like that. You know, just going out and fishing like a lot of people, you know what I mean? But I just fished shorelines, and, and you know, then I progressed, and then I got a little – there was a little uh, company here in town, you know, they made this – little usa pro a little fiberglass little uh thing and got it got my first controlling motor and stuff like that you know um but in 1991 was my uh, when i fished my first bass tournament um wow me and a but me and a buddy there was a like a muscular dystrophy tournament on our home lake you know and i remember you know uh going down and fishing it just Cause we love fishing and uh, we thought, well, we'll enter the tournament and we didn't do that great, you know, but uh, yeah, but it, it was a, it was a good memory. 
you know, but that's, that's when I first got started. I mean, I always want to do it. And, uh, I, I can even remember, like, when I first started a uh, chiropractic school, I thought, you know, and the FLW was just getting kicking off hard, you know, and it was like, and I remember writing to them and saying, hey, you know, you guys going to need like a, uh, you know, a, a chiropractor for the tour and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, that was a long time ago. Did they respond? Well, no, no. <laughs> 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 that would been pretty cool yeah i know right i thought uh, you know i'm thinking all these uh, angles you know their backs are hurting because i you don't know how many times i've been out on the local lake and people run up and ride up to me you know everybody's practicing for a tournament ride up to me and they're like oh and crawl on my boat and want to adjust it right on the floor of my boat when did the, the hotel when when did you start looking at the Federation and actually participating in that? You know, um, uh, cause after that, I started fishing some little local tournaments, some, uh, some Wednesday night tournaments on some of the lo little local lakes here. And so we have a lot of 20 horsepower lakes back then they were 10 horsepower and, um, started doing pretty decent. And, uh, but I see these guys walking around with these, you know, every now and then I'd see these guys with a pen. Pennsylvania jacket had like a big Pennsylvania stuff like that and their name on it and stuff. I'm like, what is that? You know, and they're like, oh, that's the divisional team. You know, 12 guys a year qualify for that. And I was wow. like, I was like, I want one of those jackets. I got to figure out how to get it. So I joined a little local club here, Bass Buddies. And, uh, you know, I'm like, I want one of those. And uh, so you had to make the divisional team. You had to make your top 12. And, uh, I made 18 of them. So I got a. It's insane. Wow. And going to the divisional, you get three shirts and a jacket. Mm. So after 18 of them, I got, I got a couple of shirts and stuff. Like <laughs> but I made, yeah, I, I've done that. I made, I made 18 divisionals, 14 for Pennsylvania, two for Maryland, and two for DC. Holy crap, dude. That's insane. Yeah. What? And then, uh, and then you move on, you know, to qualify after the divisional, you, uh, you know, try, try to make the national, the national championship. You, you know, you want to be your top guy in that state. And I did that six times, four for Pennsylvania, once for Maryland and once for DC. How, how hard was it to get familiar with those bodies of water being a Pennsylvania boy and then having to like travel and we'll get to like the Kerr tournament, but you got to go to Kerr, yeah. the Delaware, the Potomac. Like w was that a big learning yeah. curve? Oh yeah. I mean, but I think coming from Pennsylvania where we fished, I think it, it helps a little bit, you know, because we have, we have, you know, some of these natural lakes we have the nearest, we have Conneaut Lake and not too far. We have Chautauqua. Um, then we have the great, we have Erie. I'm an hour and a half straight South of Prescott on Lake Erie. So we got the, you know, the, the great lakes there. And then we got some of these little local lakes here, like little muddy lakes, little, uh, red horse. Then we got, uh, Gracetown Lake, you know, which is a Highland reservoir. Um, you know, uh, for years it didn't have like grass and stuff in it and, you know, but it's, it's coming on, but you know, you get to look, you, you get to fish so many. Oh, and then just south of me a half an hour, we got three rivers where they had, you know, the Bassmaster classic and the <laughs> that FLW. Classic one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. I was there yeah. for that one actually. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah, we do have a, a big variety of, uh, different, you know, and you have all these little, little federation tournaments on all these different things. You have to learn how to fish a lot of this, a lot of this stuff. And I, I think it helps you be a well-rounded angler. And back then I was like, still going, Oh, that's all I want to do is fish, you know, and I'm going to do this. Too. And, and I, you know, won a lot of stuff around here and it just got to be where like some of the circuits we fished around here, it was like, they put the same tournament on the same weekend year after year you know, on the same lake, and it's like, you know, it's just, it's just got to be monotonous. It's like, okay, pretty much you could have like a little tackle box ready to go. Okay. We're fishing Pima tuning next week. Okay. Here, I got everything I need for there, or we're fishing Shenango or we're fishing, you know, it, it just started to be like, man, even though you're doing good, it's like, wow. 
you know, I, I uh, you, you get you get tired of it. So me and my partner back then, me and my fishing partner, we thought, you know, we we just won the the points championship here, and uh, and you know, had the highest points ever and stuff like that. And we we thought, you know. Why don't we go try something else? So let's go over to Ohio and fish the X Series circuit, you know, and get our teeth kicked in, you know. But we'll learn something, you know, go into some lakes we've never seen before and stuff like that. We went over there and won two of them and won the points championship that year. That's so, insane, dude. Wow. It was uh, yeah, it was uh it was it was pretty cool. Um so to get what you're saying is like the then the Potomac stuff. So it, it just started um we had some federation stuff done and i wanted to start fishing it and i remember going down there and just thinking wow this is different you know it's just it's like not only is it like a regular place you're trying to find fish but then it puts that whole title thing it's like a whole nother factor which just you know blew my mind i'm just like yeah this is awesome you know it just makes you think so much more and plan out and and i kind of like that you know and the potomac's been very good to me i mean i've won a lot of like federation stuff from pennsylvania dc maryland down there um uh some other things i mean i've come so close to winning bfls down there you know i've had fish hook to win it you know to you know um well well before we get to the potomac we got to talk about the photo and the trophy too uh because i feel like that was a pretty big highlight in your life like what is your experience oh yeah Kerr? um Kerr reservoir bugs on uh well, we we had a uh, we had a uh, two day Mister Bass Federation tournament, Pennsylvania Federation tournament down there years and years ago, and it was a two day. You know, and Kerr's not known for giant fish, and I wasn't catching giant fish, but I had lunker both days, and I think um, I beat second place by thirteen pounds. Okay, so like. Then go ahead. Four years after that, I was I fished for uh, Maryland Federation, made a divisional. So I was fishing for Maryland down there, and we was down in Kerr. And for the, I came in third place overall for the whole tournament. I was I, I missed winning by like a pound and a half over two. Wow. It, it was three days. Um, and it, again, the second place guy from Maryland behind me was thirteen pounds behind me. Mm. You know, and you, like I said, you're Damn. not catching. It wasn't. I wasn't catching giant bags, but you know, I just. And so then we went back down for. Um, we was back down there for um the divisional, um, the Bassmaster divisional, and uh, I ended up winning the whole thing. I got on a pattern. It was. Like crazy. That's what that well, picture would be. Well, let's, talk, let's talk about that story. Yeah, let's talk about that picture and that story then, because there's a story there. We're like, did you pre oh, yeah. a lot? Uh, no, I went down. I got, I got like uh, two days of uh, two days of pre fishing in. That's not yeah. too bad. You've had some practice on there. And what time? What time oh, yeah. of year was this too for people? That was like in June. That was like in June. Okay. Oh wow. Shit. So it wasn't even like pre-spawn type. You're doing like post-spawn, yeah. almost early summer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So some of those other federation tournaments, like that one, uh, that two-day Mister Bass for Pennsylvania, that was like in April that I won. And then we had that other division. It was like in the fall, and that's when the divisionals used to be like in September. And then they changed some stuff up, and then the last division, the the one. That I won, uh, I won the whole thing. It was, uh, it was like in June. Yeah. So yeah. What with that tournament win? Like, yes. Talk to me about that a little bit. About was it like you were just going away? You had like a thirty pound lead. Was it wire to wire? Like, did you think you had it that last day when you came in? No, no, uh, because the. Um, because in that tournament, I was actually a co-angler going into it because my boat, I had boat problems. So I had to take the, I had to take the co-angler spot. But the first day of the tournament, I get with a guy and he's like, I'm on nothing. I have absolutely nothing. Uh, I haven't even caught a keeper down here yet. 
And I said, well, I got a pretty good pattern going on and stuff like that. So he wanted to check one spot off. We ran there. He fished for about the first half hour and nothing. He goes, all right, let's go do what you want. So we went over and in like not even an hour, I had a, I had a nice limit. And then he took the boat. So I think when we came in, we were like maybe first and third. Wow. In the first day, the first day, and it's a three-day tournament. So we were like first and third, and he's telling me like, you know, you know, there's a lot of good fish here. He said, so, you know, we, we could share this stuff. I said, no, 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 we're not sharing it. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, that. I said, you can go down the lake and try to reproduce it. But it was, uh, it, it, it didn't, uh, it didn't pan out like that. You know, then like the next day I get with a guy, he wants to run up in the grass. He wants to run far away. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, dude, you know, uh, you know, you only caught two fish yesterday. I'm telling you, this is, this is, and we, we got to get on it because these other guys are going to be so, and, and I'll, I'll get to, so we go and do his thing. When we came back to my stuff and started fishing through it, it had been like cleaned up, you know, and I could tell, mm. I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm thinking, you know, here I am. And like, I don't know what I was like in third place or something. We, I, we was like, man, I think we was third and fifth. I, I think I was third and he was fifth, you know, after the first day. <clears throat> so um, I said, hey, we got to, and here, the last day of practice, I was coming in and I was setting it down and I was going to put it on the boat, on the, on the ramp, you know, on the trailer and stuff like that. And I was thinking, you know, I got a little bit of time. I said, I haven't even been down this the other side here. It passed the bridge a little bit. So I put it back on plane and went down and I was just like looking for new stuff, stuff that I was kind of like, fishing so i thought oh that shoreline looks like what i've been fishing like red clay banks and stuff like that so i i i zoom over there and i set it down i jump up on swimmer and it wasn't it was it was like sand it kind of rolled off and went down in and there was just like i was looking i'm like nah, this ain't what i was looking for but and i had my rod i had just like a craw on it like a flipping stick i'm looking around and i see this log like like laying out of the sand, you can just see what went goes down where it just disappears under the water. And you know, it was pretty decent clear. So I was like getting almost to it, you know, and I just kind of flipped my crawl over over their log, you know, and then, and I was almost on top of it in my film. You know, and I said the hook is almost a five pounder. So wow. I'm thinking, oh, there's other logs sticking up. So I went over and fished those and I thought oh, I must have been a fluke, you know. So, anyways, it stuck in my head. You know, so when we we went and hit that stuff, and my stuff had been like pretty much cleaned up, I said, "Did I? You know, we got to run down here." You know, you know, he took his four hours of the day. I just fished my first two hours, and nothing. I said, "We got two hours left." I said, "Let's just go down here." There was a reason that fish was down there, so I go down there, and on the way down there, I was I was going to just do a little finessey thing, so I I'm tying up a little tube called like a goofy rig. And never threw it before in my life, but you know, I, I was like, I want to come down through that little the, the little roots and stuff in that sand to come out of there, and I don't want to get hung up. So I want to Texas rig, but I want to have that little flutter action. So I'm I'm hooking it up on the way down there, and I got and I got a spinning rod with like ten pound braid and like an eight pound or a ten pound leader. So we get down there, I jump up front, and I'm like fishing down, just throwing it up on this little sand bank, and it just comes off and rolls in the deep water. And I'm just throwing up there and bumping it and I felt something hold it, you know, and I kind of half ass hook set, you know, and this two and a half jumps out of the water, spits it. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm mm. like, Shit, I needed that fish, you know, I'm like, yeah. oh, put your head in the game, you know, and I throw right back up the same spot. I pulled down and it felt like the exact same thing. I set the hook and it was a four pounder. Okay. It was a four one actually. So then I, I'm like, Whoa, I start fishing around there and I get to the other spot and I whack another one and I had to go in. I had two fish the second day. So we run in there and, um, I weighed eight, two and I put the one on for, for a lunker. It weighed four one. I said, well, then this must be four, put it on. It was four one also. So, and I took the lead in the tournament the second day. With this, holy crap! Like I said, you know, curve tough, you know, and yeah. I'm I'm holding them up, and and on the in the Bassmaster magazine and stuff like that, it was saying like, you know, great takes lead um, on day two. Uh, the heat was getting to everybody. Uh, even had Gray seeing double with these two, you know, 
four one uh you know four pound one ounce uh so it was kind of neat so then the third day we go how, out how and, nervous were you going into day three oh because it's it's one thing when you're chasing the leader it's the other thing when you have the crown on your head Oh, for sure. For sure. Especially because I, you know, people are interviewing you. They're like, uh, we're going to be following you with a camera boat. We're going to, and it's like, that's how, that's how I got this picture. The, the camera oh, guy, he, he gave me that picture. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. But they're they catching the winning fish right there. Poor Ponder, you know, on that little sandbank. See this little sandbank here? Yeah. Oh, this little sandbank. Yeah. I was just driving, and it is just come out. And we, we're sitting in probably about 15 feet of water. And uh, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. And uh, where was I at? Uh, uh, so day three oh, starts. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now day three starts where, and I get with a guy from Virginia, but you know, there's a little gameplay. You know, they're like, dude, that freaking dude's catching fish. Keep him away from his fish. Well, this guy's like, he's like, he had, he had like one fish on day one, two fish on day two. And we get there. I'm leaving the tournament. And, you know, I'm like, dude, I, you know, I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, he's like, I want to go up here and throw some top waters and stuff like that. I said, oh, man. I said, I said, you know, I'm leaving the point, right? He goes, yeah. He goes, we'll get to your stuff. He said, we can, I can catch uh, fish in your spot just as well as you can catch them on mine. So I was like, you know, instead of freaking out, I was just like, whatever. If, if it's the B, it's a B, whatever. So we go up. We fish for four hours, and he catches two like bluegill on a little popper. Mm. So, so we run down. I said, "Let's go," you know. And, and the camera boat's following us. You know, it's like nervous. You know, so we're running. We're running back down to uh, where I want to fish, and I run past this one bay, and I said, "Hey, there's a you know pull in here. There's a little brush pile right here. So we pull out and stick it out of the water, you know." And he's he's thrown to it. I'm like, "I don't want to, you know, get to this." Well, I catch like a two and a half off of it, flipping in there, catch two and a half off of it. So we flipped it a little bit, pack up, run down. And I said, this next little bay, pull in there, another brush pile. He throws in, he gets hung up. I throw in there, whack a two and a half. So now we're running down to my stuff. We get down to the sand bank, that sand bank, and I get my little tube out, you know, and I'm going down through there, going down through there. And uh, I'm trying to think, I had those two, two and a half. I catch like a, I catch like a pound and a half fish and I'm thinking, Hey, it's really, you know, in the box. So we're fishing, fishing, nothing, 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 nothing. I'm thinking, where can I, I I'm like, I don't have anything else. You know, all that other stuff's cleaned up. I'm, I'm going to fish here. Um, and that same log that I caught that giant off of, you know, in practice that I thought was nothing. I had that little tube with a 10 pound braid and like an eight pound leader and a little tiny, uh, gets it. Uh, and goofy right i throw up along that log i throw up along it and i'm bringing it i'm bringing it down and i feel dunk, and i went boom, and i felt a big head shake and i was like there's one you know and it must have went under it's just it's just crazy it went it, when we were talking before the show you know a little bit about when it's your time it's your time yeah because it goes it must have went under the log and that braid must have sunk into that bark and it was oh like it was locked up it was locked up solid so i was going like this and it was solid i was like oh my Jeez. gosh so i was like I, I i i reeled down and i was like pulling on it like this and i mean i know it had to be right at the verge of breaking and, and i let off something maybe usually i'd be like oh you know and I pulled back and I let off. I'm like, oh my gosh. I pulled back again a little bit, right as and I let off again. I'm like, I can't believe that, man. It felt like a good fish. Just then this fish comes jumping out of the water. I'm like, there he is. That's the one I lost. And my line starts taking off. Oh my God. So he must like went under the log. He must have went under the log, you know, and was like trying to fight and it was holding him. So he come back the other way and must have popped it loose and jumped. And started taking my line. And I leaned back. I'm like, he's still on there. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, I said, dude, don't miss him with the net. You know, and I was bringing the camera boat sitting out there. And I don't know how bad my line is because I just stretched the shit out. Plus, it was in the lock. Yeah. So I'm favorite, favorite, favorite. And I'm like just pulling it up like this as he's getting close to the boat. And just as he, I was pulling him up, then he comes flying out of the water. And that's what you, that's what you see right here. That's so freaking out of the water. And and like I'm lifting up, 
And he reaches out and gets it. It was a four pounder. And right out, I was like, yeah, you know, I had that fish in a boat. I was like, oh my gosh, you know. And the camera guy's out there. He's looking at his camera, his visual camera, you know. And he goes, he said, dude, I got the perfect picture of that. He goes, I got him stretched out with the net. I got you up like this. The fish is out of the water, water flying. Yeah. So, so that was pretty cool. And then this here, hey, let me see. This is what I want. Dude, That's my that is That's a trophy, trophy, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, did that you was know it? once that was in the net. Did you know? No, no, because I, that's only four. I only had four. So but I'm trying to catch I'm, 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 big fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For Kerr and stuff. Yeah, but still, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you know how that works out. You know, I only have four fish. I need another one. And then, uh, you know, because I knew those like? other guys. Are, what was weighing like going into to weigh in? Oh, stressful because the the guy that was in the boat, he's like, he's like, you won this. And I said, I said, I said, I need one more. One more is going to give me like a really good chance, you know, and it was fish and fish. And then it's like almost time. And I'm like, we just fished that for a couple of hours or something like that. So there was some other logs down and some docks. So I just put the troll motor on high and ran down there and I'm fishing. I whacked one and it was, I think they had to be, if they had to be, it's been a while. If they had to be 15, this was like 14 and seven, eight. And I'm flipping them. I'm like, oh. You know, and then I catch it like a 13. I'm like, oh, we got to go in. So I had to go in with four. And I'm thinking, man, that just hurt me. You know, that's, that's not, you know, and the guy that rode with me the first day that was on nothing, you know, he's got a limit, you know, mm. and he's been catching them every day, you know, him and his, him and his uh, buddy, uh, you know, and it's just like, it just took all that stuff away from me. And I was just like, oh my gosh, uh, is this going to, you know, and then I thought, He's got me, you know. I mean, he, he, by the seams that, by the seam of it, you know, he's he's got me, and uh, he didn't. I ended up winning, and it was yeah, awesome. That's... Just getting that feeling. Oh, it was just it was just crazy. It was a really good feeling. So this was the Bassmaster side, and then um, I mean, just to jump ahead, the following year I was fishing. I was fishing for DC. I made a divisional. And uh, it was funny because you know where the, the the divisional championship was was on Lake Erie. Oh shit! Yeah, so I'm fishing for DC up at Lake Erie. So I'm fishing against the top guys in you know the other states and stuff, plus the top twelve in Pennsylvania. And I end up winning that whole thing too. That was on the FLW side. I won the Bassmaster side in 2014. I won the FLW side on 2015. Back to back you. Holds- and I, as far as I know, I don't think anybody's won the, the Mid Atlantic Division, you know, both the Bassmaster and the FLW won both divisions. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna have to check with that. Wh- which one holds more of a memory in your heart? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it this I mean, this was this was pretty good that down there at Kerr, because like I said, I've always liked Kerr for some reason. You know, it's kind of like the Potomac, you know, just something, it clicks with you and I like it. Um, but the one up at Erie was really, really good too. Um, but it, it, I was fishing a buddy circuit. It was funny because I was fishing a buddy circuit and we were like the top team of the year in 2015. Uh, me and him was fishing, and uh, the championship, the classic was on Lake Erie, uh, Bay only. So we're practicing usually, you know, you know, this is like in September. You know, um, usually you're fishing for largemouth. Uh, it was a little stingy, not a lot of big ones eating and stuff. Why well, go out towards the mouth where the chute comes in off the main lake? And was getting bit by like little little yellow perch. I'm like, why are the perch coming in already? You know, it's awful early for them. And then I catch like a three and a half pound smallmouth. And then my partner throws out, he catches like a four pounder. We're like, whoa, what are these smallmouth doing in here already? You know, way too early. But I'm like, okay. So the next day we run out, that's our tournament. We run out for the championship and we sit out on that point point. we're fishing and we 
we crush them. I mean, guys are coming in with like six pound limits of large mouth and, you know, uh, seven, eight, 10 pound. Limit. We come in with, I think we had 24 something. Mm-hmm. With six fish. <laughs> was that, was, was that yeah. before the gobies really got in there? No, 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 no. Gobi's been there for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the zero muscles and stuff that cleared it up. Yeah. This is only, you know, a few years back, but, uh, but it was funny because as we're winning this tournament, right. Some of the guys that I know, and I didn't even realize who it was at the time from DC and Maryland and stuff like that. They're already starting because the next week was the divisional up there. So they're going out. I'm on the edge of the shoot uh, on the edge of the shoot on the first drop off. So as they're heading out to the main lake, they see us whacking these fish. So they're sitting out there with binoculars, you know, from you know, 80 yards away, watching, trying to see what bait we're throwing and stuff. I'm like, you know, I was like, get going, get out of the lake, go practice, mm-hmm. you know. So needless to say, the word got around. And that little area got the crap beat out of it all week practicing. You know what I mean? Because next week, but then um, I had some other stuff out on the main lake, and I would stop there because I knew the little sweet spots and stuff of that. Even though they beat it up, you know, there was still some fresh fish coming in, and I, and I had some little sweet spots. And it was crazy because the first day I'm leading. You know, the first day I crack them, I'm leading. Uh, I think it was like a fourth fish limit i had like 16 something okay so the second day i get with the guy that's leading and, the, and he's a rider from pennsylvania i'm fishing for dc you know even though i'm from there so i get get with him so i got to give him so we go and i start cracking him and i i lost two fish lost one on like a, a blade bait and lost one on a drop shot just come on button but i had another good one um but he wants me to take him somewhere where he can just drag, you know, he wants, I was like, man, I said, dude, every, as far as I know, every big fish in the lake is coming shallow right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I said, well, we can go out here. I got some waypoints and stuff like that. We can go out there. So, you know, I have to give him his time too, you know? Yeah. So I take him out there and he caught a couple little, I don't they were, I don't even think they were keepers and stuff like that. So he's like, whatever, let's just do what you, you know. So we went back into shore, and I ended up with three. So I got one short. So a guy from West Virginia ends up passing me for the lead by, I don't know, half a pound or something like that. So the next day I thought, I'm going to run out. I'm going to try to hit it. The- now I'm in last flight, so – everybody's out i'm almost last boat going out so everybody is stopping on that key area you know where i've been start, starting every day so when i go to run out they're all down here they were all gathered around this one area and they were leaving this other little part up here i'm thinking all right you know so i stopped like i'm like 100 yards from them they're right there it's flat calm i pull in there and get on my waypoint and stuff like that and i'm throwing down off the edge and bringing it up i crack a big small mouth it's jump it comes in gets in the net boom put it in there there's there's guys are turning around looking at me and stuff like that throw out there crack another one in the net mm. and they're sitting there because it's painful because they're watching me win the thing right in front yeah. of them in the first 15 minutes of the time for me you know so I throw out again uh i think i hooked a, a small one or something like that you know and threw it back and i hooked another one and it's jumping and now boats are starting to turn around and starting to troll motor over towards me and i knew some of the guys from when i fished in maryland i said hey you know call them by name i said hey you know i didn't bother you guys over there i have a chance to win this thing today I said, I'd appreciate it if you just give me a little bit of room. And they were What's good. The they were like, hey, no problem. Uh, they, were, they were probably 100 yards from me. Okay. Probably 100 yards from me. Interesting. Yeah, because I know we're going to get to the Potomac, and the Potomac usually fishes tight too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, so I caught I caught four fish right there. I had the tournament one the first 15 minutes. You know, didn't know it yet, but you know what I mean? I knew I had a pretty good chance. So, what? That was that was a that was the FLW Federation. Uh, so, 
Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool to win, especially to win them back to back. You know, the Bassmasters one year and the FLW the next year, so the Atlantic you, Divisional. You've won on Kerr with basically no weight because that place sometimes fishes like the Ohio River. You've won up on the Big Lake with a really nice bag of bronze back, and I think that yeah. takes us really to this BFL event on the Potomac. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, what what's your relationship with the Potomac, honestly, compared to all these other bodies of water? Oh man, um, I just uh, something about the baton. Like I said with the title and just, I just really like it. And I've, uh, I remember, I remember fishing a DC Federation tournament. That, I mean, I've won other tournaments before that, like Pennsylvania Federation coming down. I've had you know like two days and you know and uh, um, just you know my biggest fish there was in a was in a Federation tournament. It was a seven twelve. That I caught off a bed that I didn't know it was a bed. It was in a hole in the grass. I was throwing a little swim bait. I saw this fish come up and just suck it down. And I, when I set the hook, it was a little homemade swim bait. He, he raked it and I threw it back across. He wouldn't. So I snuck over by there and I'm like, there's a hole in the grass right there. And I'm like, it looks a little dark down there. So I dropped a little buoy right beside it. And then I, I just fished around a little bit and come on the inside of it and threw a little, little finesse bait down in that hole and cracked her. But it's just, it's just, Stuff I remember so much because it just it, it was just so just loved it you know what I mean just the, some of the different tournaments and stuff like that that I've had uh, really good success down there and, and just something about the Potomac you know it just uh, was this your first time it, down here this year? Um, yes. Uh, this is a, this is another thing. Okay. And that's what they were asking me because, and that's what like a lot of my friends back home, they're all like, you know, on like on Facebook. So they're like, oh my God, you know, you, that's great. And you know, stuff so because last year I retired May 10th. I retired because that would have been my dad's like birthday. And I thought, I'm going to, you know, I, I had to come up with a date, you know what I mean? And I just kept putting it off because I was traveling. So, so I made it May 10th. Well, May 11th, I found that I had throat cancer. So all last summer, Jesus, yeah. So all last summer, I had to treat last summer and fall. So I was laid up. My boat sat in my garage from July. I can tell you when July, uh, July something, because me and a buddy of mine was fishing a tournament up at Lake Latonka, and I showed up. I was sick as a dog because I was getting ready to start my treatments, and they put a port in my chest. And here they put a dirty port in, and I got I got a staph infection. I woke up in the – that was four days after they put it in. I was sick as a dog. I woke up in the morning, but I got to meet my buddy. So, you know, I just – I was like, Phew. I took a couple of Advil and stuff, and I, I, my boat was already hooked up, and I drove up to Lake Latonka. I met up with him. I said, dude, I don't feel good. So we, we launched. We go out to this deep spot. We cracked four big fish in the first hour. Um, it was like a four fish limit for some reason, you know, but we had enough for first and lunker and I laid down in the boat and I slept the rest of the day. I was freezing. I had, his son was blazing. It was July. You know, I had a big sweatshirt on. I'm freezing. I'm asleep. He, and my buddy, he even says today, I, I knew you were in bad shape, you know, for you to lay down during a tournament or something like that. Not, you know, he was just like, it's it just crazy. But anyways, we won that tournament and I drove home. I drove straight home. I, I called my girlfriend. I said, listen, I said, you know, when I get home, I said, uh, you need to take me to the emergency room. I don't even know if I'm going to make it home. I'm driving home. Oh, I guess. I pulled. So I just pulled right in my yard, shut off. I didn't even come in and wash my hands. I jumped right in her car. She took me down to the emergency room, and I was down in there for a week with three IVs in me. And then they had to take it, do surgery, take it back out again. Then, you know, you know, so anyways, then I had to do my my treatment. I had to do six chemo and 35 radiation treatments to my throat. It was horrible. But the good thing, I mean, the doctor said the type I have, the type I had was uh, had a very high cure rate. And he says, we don't even use that word very often. He said, but it has a very high cure rate. He said, the problem is it's probably one of the worst cancer treatments you can go through. And it, it was, he wasn't joking. It was horrible. So anyways, I, I finished my treatments in the middle of September. It was like the middle of November before I could even swallow water. I lost like 50 some pounds. I had to have a feeding tube in my side. It, it was absolutely horrible. 
So coming out to this, I was like, you know, trying to get my strengths back up and doing some stuff and fishing with some buddies. And I was like, the BFL was showing that they were going to do the regional down at Bugs Island. And I was like, yeah, that'd be nice. It's going somewhere different. Because usually if the Potomac's on the schedule, the regional's at the flats. If the flats is on the schedule, the regional's at the Potomac. And that time of year, it's usually, you know, the end of September funk, you know what I mean? And it's tough. And so when they so put for the people at home, there, So for the people at home to get the timetable, you start your treatment in late summer, early fall. You When do you finish your treatment? Like December, January-ish? I start my treatment in july and i finished my treatment the middle of september okay oh shit and then where were you mentally and physically in the winter time did you i mean where oh. are you right now are you in remission oh yeah 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 yep yep i've had uh, a couple clean pet scans and stuff like that and actually my doctor last time and you know at the pittsburgh va um she told me um i said when do i have to get my next pet scan and she said, well, let me see. She said, you've been, this is eight months post-treatment. Um, she said, uh, you've had two clear PET scans. She said, we don't need another PET scan. You know, she said, we'll continue to scope you. So every, you know, three months I've been getting scoped. They go up my nose and down in to, to, to look at my throat and stuff. But she says, you know, she said, actually, she said, this is your eight months post-treatment and stuff like that. And, and you're clean. She said, the um the chance of it coming back now is very rare so i said all and right so, so what been time was that what... Been... that was just the other day she told me oh shit. okay that gotcha, was gotcha. yeah that was just the other that yeah because uh like i said it's eight months and after i got done treatment they went they did a pet scan stuff they, they wait like three months after treatment to see if anything's going on they scope yeah and they give you a pet scan and then another three months so then i had to go back and see her to you know and i thought okay this, she usually does a scope and then sets me up for the next pet scan and she says i don't we don't need one now you have two clean ones and uh, you're eight months post and your your third scope is clean she said you know just keep an eye you know if if you start having sore throws stuff like that and so i'm just putting it in so, like yeah. I'm, I'm good to wow. go but uh, yeah, like, it I was, just want to formulate that picture, you know, like, so you finish your treatment in the fall and then you're basically like, let me get back out on the water. Like there's gotta be a lot going yeah. on though too. Oh, no, no, that, I mean, I was so physically, like I said, I was, I was like 235 pounds and the doctor told me to gain as much weight as I can before I start treatment. He goes, cause you're going to lose it. So I, and, so I went up to 252 and then when I started treatment, uh in like a month i went down to 196 and that's when i had to stop treatment for a little put me in a hospital for a week and they had to punch a hole through my side and give me a feeding tube and show me how to you know and they would send all this stuff to the house and i'd have to take these big syringes and you know and feed myself you know and and, and i had to go down to the you know i was getting chemo at the time plus i was going to the the oncology clinic you know three times a week to get just to get hydration because i couldn't even, i couldn't even swallow water for four and a half months i couldn't even swallow water i mean mm. like my brother when he looked at my throat i was only halfway through the treatment and the doctor was like looking at my throat you know i told 35 treatments about the 17th or 18th treatment the doctor was looking and checking had to light in there my brother that went to a lot of my treatments he would stand behind watching and he was like, when he, we left, his eyes were like, got bigger around. He's like, dude, I don't even want to tell you this. He said, because I know you got to come back in here tomorrow again. He said, but the roof of your mouth, the back of your tongue, and the whole way down the back of your throat, he says, is all third degree burns. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was horrible. And like I said, and then once you're done with treatment, um, I mean, I was pretty much just house ridden for uh, all summer and fall. Cause I couldn't even go outside. I tried to go outside before I got too bad. You know, I tried to just go outside and do something out in the yard. And I didn't realize that with that chemo, I shouldn't be out in the sun because I didn't know if I was going to make it back in the house. You know, it's just, but I mean, I laugh about it now, but it was, it was absolutely horrible. 
Absolutely horrible. And that well, leads I, us into really today's tale with the Potomac, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, when I thought, you know, I was like, man, I want to go down there and, you know, and I still debate because, you know, can I go down there and, you know, leave home and be down there like by myself pretty much because can't, it's hard to find anybody up here to travel that far. You know, I'm five, five and a half hours from the Potomac. So, you know, to go down and get a hotel room and stay there, I'm like, oh, do I, do I feel, I feel good. I feel good at this point. I put uh, some weight back on. I'm, you know, 215 to 220 now, but Mike, am I get, you know, can I do this? Can I, uh, you know, am I, and I thought, Hey, you know, what's the worst going to happen? You know, so, uh, I signed up, I signed up like the week before the, you know, the, uh, the tournament. Cause I, 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 yeah, I put it in my head. I want to fish Kerr, you know, I'd like to go down and fish Kerr, you know, um, I'd like to make it there. I'm glad that it's somewhere else, you know, other than, back at the Potomac or back at the, the flat but just because of the time of year. You know what I mean? When there's fish getting that September funk and I fished divisionals down there before and it, get, it just gets so stingy um, sometimes. It, you know, so. Uh, How did you pre-fish? Yeah. Down at the Potomac? Yeah. Um, it's a big place. Like, did you try to fish the whole river? Uh, not the whole river, but a pretty good uh, piece of it. Ran around looking for grass first, you know, and actually, you know, talking to some guys that, uh, hey, you know, the Scataway, because I won tournaments, I won tournaments for Scataway in the grass. I won tournaments in Wade's Bay in the grass, you know, this time of year. And I was like, you know, they said up north, there's not a whole lot, unless you're fishing hard cover, there's not a whole lot of grass, you know, so it's like, okay, you know, so. The Scataway, yeah. Yeah, Piscataway, Broad Street, yeah. and all these, you know, a lot of that grass, you know, it's crazy. I don't know what goes on with the Potomac there, you know. Because that year that I won, it, it was beautiful grass in Piscataway. Mm -hmm. I won that. There wasn't a blade of grass in the next six years. Yeah, no, we, like, haven't had, we haven't had grass, thick grass. Okay, I know there's somebody in the comment section when this thing gets uploaded, say like, well, I found grass up in D.C. It's like, I get it, but I have people on the show every week talking right, about the Potomac. Right. From Pohick up, there's not a lot of vegetation, and I have no idea why. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, you, I've won tournaments in the grass up there. In Broad Creek, I've won uh, tournaments in the grass. And, you know, but uh, I don't know. You know, uh, but uh, so, you know, so, you so or I. Die? I was your plan grass or die? Was your whole no, game no, plan no, just no, 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 no. Um, but you know, I was I was hoping it'd be still spawning because I love you know catching them on the on the you know spawning torrent down there. But but it, it was it was kind of off. Whether you know, I don't know. You hear so many people, oh, it's already done, or you know, next wave's coming, or something like that. It was just cold like a week ago, you know. And so, I don't know. So I'm not sure if um, you know. I'm sure they're not all done. I'm sure you know, like you said, somebody's going to be saying, oh, "I got spawners over on this dock over yeah. in Occoquan or something." But um, you know, th there's going to be there's going to be strategies. There's going to be some way before that. There's going to be some way after that. Uh, but the majority of the fish, the ones you can, you know, target stuff like that, I could I couldn't find them. You know, I, I just couldn't find it going on. And uh and I checked some other stuff like down in uh, Potomac Creek. They had and I think the biggest thing for me, you know, I don't know how everybody else fishes, but when I was into some of those bays, it was so thick, you know, it must have been just from that mild winter, you know, that it, a lot of it didn't die off or you know, it's been growing for a long time. But it was so thick going in, just like a carpet. You know what I mean? It was so thick. And then you get in there where it kind of breaks up, where, you know, they, they would be spawning, you know. And I got in there, and I caught a lot of fish, but they were all, you know, just a little box, you know, pound and a half fish, two-pound fish, fish, stuff like that. Um, and I'm looking. I'm like, okay, these fish were probably here just not too long ago. Where would they go? And I turn around, and I see, you know, a half a mile of carpet grass thick the whole way out. I'm like, they're in here somewhere. I ain't going to stick around and try to find them because it's so thick. You, you got to either sit there and punch it or you got to throw a frog over top. And if they're not, you know, punching them would be like ridiculous. I mean, you're, you're talking square miles, you know, after square mile, after square mile, just punch it, trying to find, you know, a group of fish. And, and, uh, so, 
that was not on my plan. So I, I just went and uh, uh, went just started working my way up the river and uh, trying to find, uh, you know, and so hit you, some hard, you, hard cover. So you started in Piscataway, and then you you went all the way down to basically the Chesapeake Bay. No, I didn't. Even, I didn't go into Piscataway. Just talking to people, I'm like, is there any oh, grass okay, in Piscataway? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. But so in practice, I'd say I went up to. Um, I practice hit some of the docks in it, right in the mouth of Pohick, and I would say down to Potomac Creek. So that's a pretty good area. But okay, but I took a little ride through um, like Blue Banks and Wades. No grass, no grass. You know, uh, to any amount at all. So you know, no sense even stopping there. Um, and then uh, I fished some of the uh, main river, hard cover and stuff like that. Some of the rocks and uh, with with a Arkendale, square bill places like that. I didn't hit Arkendale. I don't know enough about Arkendale. I wasn't fishing it when, I mean, my very first time down there, Arkendale was kind of going, but that was kind of like the end of it when the fish kind of shifted down to Aquia. You know, that's um, a lot of area to cover in practice. I mean, more oh power to you. Gosh. That's a lot of area. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but fishing some, uh, some hard cover and, uh, you know, and whatever weeds I could find. So why, why were you so, I guess, set on just the grass versus hard cover versus, cause like a lot of tournaments have been won on just hard cover alone. Oh, for sure. But usually this time of year, usually when them fish pull off the beds and stuff, they usually pull into the grass. It's just, you know, a lot of bigger fish just usually pull into the grass and, and feed up and relax and, and stuff like that. You know, I know I've won a lot of tournaments before the spawn or right around the spawn on hard cover, you know, uh, like on the main river when they're, uh, uh, when the, uh, the uh, white perch and stuff are up spawn and then these big giants are swallowing them things up you know i've I, I love that time of year but they get on the beds and stuff and then it just seems like they're on the inside you know where it breaks up and then they kind of just pull out into that tick stuff and it's hard to get to them you know it's hard to get to them so so you launch you launch on the tournament day yes did you feel like you had some found um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I had, I had some fish, but I didn't know what kind of quality, you know, tournament day, because of course, you know, uh, I'm down there fishing and it's been sunny for two days and then tournament day, it's rain all day long. You know, I was mm -hmm. soaking wet. I didn't even take any boots with me. So I'm fishing in tennis shoes and my feet are soaked, you know, and and, and I got my hood up, but I can't stand that rain hitting it. It's so loud. It's like, you know, so I got to pull it down. My head, my hat's soaking wet, you know, just so I can hear and, you know, think. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we launched over at Smallwood. Um, I was like boat 48. It had to be in a 230. And uh, so I thought... I, I got a pretty decent boat number. I f figured uh, I was going to start off over at like Lisylvania, you know, start over and hit some rocks over there because, you know, I, I stopped there the other day, you know, and, you know, and cracked the dates when I was on there like five minutes for sure. I mean, because it just slowed it yeah. up. I mean, they, they, they drop, you know, a lot of tournaments going on there and, and the BFL the, teams, the week yeah. before and the, the, and the, the BFL the week before was one there at, mm -hmm. at, at Lisylvania. So, you know, these boat number i thought if it's not too crowded I'll, so i go over and i stop you know and uh i fish the rocks a little bit didn't get bit for a while and stuff like that so i started fishing some uh some grass and stuff like that and uh and some hard cover and uh with a square bill and i cracked my first what, what's a while first one. what's a while um <laughs> me a while yeah it was probably uh Maybe 20 minutes. Okay. 15, that's not too 40, 40 okay, minutes. That's not nah. too bad. In the tournament and stuff like that. And I crack a uh a four nine large mouth on a square oh, bill. And then uh <clears throat> not I don't know, maybe uh then I go over to a, a couple docks and stuff where I got bid on. 
and there's a piece of little bit of concrete and stuff like that on the side. And I, 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 I pull up to it, you know, I was, I was kind of cranking coming down through uh, with a square bill and stuff. And I, I pull up and I, I throw a, I throw a craw dad in there, you know, a chigger craw or something in there, and he gets hit. And I, I set the hook back, and one of my claws is missing. I'm like, eh, is there a purse or something like that? I power pull down, get down, I change, I put a different color on, you know, and take a little bit with some charge fruits and stuff. So I get back up and I throw back over there, and I'm bringing it. And it just feels like, you know, I fished so many beds up at Lake Erie. I get this. I got this little technique I have, you know, when they're bedding fish, where you when you can't see them because smallmouth have to fish for them like for thirty years up there, and you see, you think you can see them, it's crystal clear, and you can see them, and you never see them take your bait. You're you sitting there, and your line never moves. You're only ten feet away from them, and then you see them swim over there, and you see them spit something out. You're like, what's that over there? You know, you pick up, and you realize. Oh, that was my tube over there. And that, my line never moved. You never felt them. So I come up with a little technique that I can detect as soon as they, as soon as they touch your lips on it. So I'm like, man, I felt like a bass. I'm like, you know, like, like one was on a bed or something like that. So I reeled back up. I threw back in, and then I was cocked and loaded. I'm like, if this is bad. And then as soon as I felt that, boom, I set back on it. And uh, it was a 412 large mouth. How, so, and just to pause from the timeline, the Potomac River doesn't is not like Lake Norman. There's not a whole lot of docks. I can name every dock on that river. And with that said, how do you pre-fish for docks when there's not ten billion? Do you stick a bunch of oh, them, yeah. or is it like you just you 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 hit one dock? Okay, there's a good one. I'm done. They're here, and I I leave it. You know, like in practice, I caught one like a, like a two and a half off it or something like that, you know, and on the pylons. Well, this wasn't even on the pylons. This was like beside it, you know, a little piece of, and it was like up really shallow, you know, it was, it was only like two feet of water, but it was kind of like off color stuff like that when I threw it there. You know, I was just kind of like working it. I was going to just get started working down the dock, you know, and I, I threw up there and I was like, you know, like I said, I got that first first little snap, you know, and when I said and the claw was going, so I thought, you know, so I'm like, okay, and I threw back here. You know, usually, you know, I mean, a, a almost five pound large mouth is not going to sit there in two feet of water and just keep nibbling at your bait, nibbling, nibbling. You know what I mean? Usually, you know, he's going to know something's up there. You know what I mean? So for him, this is it hit the second time, and I was like, pretty sure that was. That's more like a bed, a bed bite, you know. So I, I reeled back in, I threw it up there, and like I said, I was ready for it this time. As soon as he did that, I leaned back and I drove that hook right through his top lip, and he went crazy, just going all over. And the rider was getting a net, you know, and I put it in there, and I was like, ah, oh, that's you know, now we got things started. And uh, uh, then I uh, I fished these docks in practice. I fished them in practice. Yeah. Okay. I fished them in so practice. Did, did I, said, I caught like a two and a half off. No, I, okay, I caught gotcha. like a two and a half on practice and I was like, okay, there, you know, there's fish using this. I'm, I'm, I'm gotcha, just, you gotcha, know, gotcha. it's, it's, it's kind of like on my little rotation, you know, different things. So then I go to a little patch of, a little patch of grass, you know, and I was, uh, I was throwing a chatterbait across. It wasn't getting better. I was throwing a, uh, I was throwing a uh, swim jig on it. Just didn't, yeah, you know, it just didn't feel right. Feel right. Like yeah. So I, I pull out my square bill again. I start feathering it over the top of the grass and and uh I had I got caught like a 15 and a half. Um and then so uh, I, and I, I, I th yeah, and I thought there was more fish maybe there, you know. So I, I pick up a drop shot. Um I pick up a drop shot and I, I throw into the grass. I'm dragging it through like a with a just like a just a worm on it and stuff like that. I'm dragging through. And uh and I catch another one. It's like a 16 incher. Okay. So I get it. So you got four now, right? I got four. I got four. And I'm thinking, all right, you know, I got four. You know, it's still, you know, I mean, it's probably nine o'clock. Okay, you got you know, time. I launched once at six. So once at six. So I leave that grass patch and I run into because uh, the tide was now. Now the tide was um, it was it was down and stopped. So I'm like, 
it just seemed like everything was dead, you know? Yeah. So I run into chicken mucks and, and I run back into the Creek and, and try to get around some water that was still moving a little bit. You know what I mean? So I was back in there and I was thrown and I, I catch another keeper. And then I catch another one, call up a little bit, you know, take my 15 inch out and call up with like a 16 and a half inch. And, you know, go, go through there and a couple short ones, a couple short strikes and stuff like that. Well, then the tide's coming in. It's it's starting it's to it's yeah. starting to rip in because with the wind and stuff like that, with the east wind, it starts ripping in pretty decent and stuff like that. So uh I'm trying to think wind being like 230. So how, we're just how getting, much weight do you, you know, have at this like, point? Um, I probably had probably uh, 14 or 15 pounds, something like that. I'd say, okay, not bad, not bad. Okay, you got a decent yeah. limit right now. So I thought, I thought I got you know, I got good points. You know, come down here, you know, it was it was a tough practice, you know. I said, but I got good points, you know, that was the whole game because I want to, I want to try to qualify for Kirk because I haven't been there forever, you know, and I just, I just give me a reason to go down. So, so I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, let's. Let's run back. Everybody fishing the rocks at uh, Lisa Van. Let's let's run back. Let's run back. Uh, we get back air. I pull in. There's nobody on this one little stretch of rocks. Everybody's on there. I, so I pull in. I start fishing down through. I catch one. It was just a keeper. I don't. I don't even think I caught up with it. No. And then a guy comes over and says, "Hey, you mind if I? You know, you, you're going in the inside or the outside?" I said, "Hey, buddy." I said whatever you want to do just take it take it i said i'm not even gonna fish anymore you know i i turned around and went into the inside uh to the inside grass and stuff like that on the one corner and stuff like that and started and, and started cranking the uh the grass and got another one called up called now now i had the teeter board so calling up by ounces calling up you know yeah. half pound you know and uh I probably caught six or seven more keepers. Oh, and before that, when I was still fishing that grass earlier, before I went to Chickamauxon, I was fishing past those docks, and then there was uh, there was like some like a little wood bulkhead type thing there, and I threw a drop shot up by, and I was throwing it up. I was working a little bit, and I was throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, throwing up, and I reel it up, and there's like a three and a half comes zoom and follows it up just as I pick it up and it swoosh, swirls. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like, son of a gun, you know? So mm. I'm thinking, man, I could have used that fish. So I'm going down not 10 minutes, not 10 or 15 minutes later, I'm throwing a square bill up on some hard stuff. There's some grass laying around. I'm throwing up there. I'm just coming on air, right? And I'm, I'm reeling out through there, coming out through there. And I... Picking up out of the water, making their. I just pick it up out of the water. Uh, I'm not joking. You know, you hear these stories. This at least five pounder comes clear out of the water, sideways, like comes out and rolls like that. Just mm. misses my bait. I pulled it on, I'm like, oh my god! And just then, I was like, well, I, I told my rider, I said, well, I guess I'm not winning today because usually, if you're going to win. He would have like slapped at it and his tail would have got hooked or something, you know. You would have got him in something. I said, so I said, I you know, I said he's in my ride was like, you know, oh my god, man, if you would have had those, you would have a hammer bag today. So I ended up I ended up uh I said finished off there and ran in and uh and weighed in 17.5. I think 16.4 or something was leading when I went yeah. and I thought. I thought, you know, somebody's this is Potomac. Somebody's gonna have a 19, 20 pound bag, you know what I mean? So I thought, no big deal. So after I weighed in, they're like, you're the leader, blah, blah, blah. I said, All right, yeah. So I told my rider, go go get my truck, I'll get the boat. We put it on there, took it up in the parking lot, buttoned everything down, put Rod's way, and I go walking back down to see. And I I can hear him over the intercom, you know, anybody see Dan Gray? You know, so I I I go walking back down, I'm like, hey, yeah, uh, you know, he's like. I'm up here. We got the Phoenix hot seat for you, you know. So I had to sit in there, and you know, I still thought, yeah, whatever. You know, this is this is fun, but somebody's gonna, you know, some of these sandbaggers are coming in at the end. There's a lot of hammers on the river, you know. A lot of these local guys know a heck of a lot more about it than I do, but um, yeah, but it, it turned out that I I won it, which is awesome. Dude, seven, 
17 5 uh t- takes it at the uh, northeast bfl on the potomac uh we had christopher had 16 14 he came in second place uh, you also had a potomac teams event up there too so that place was absolutely stacked with boats what gave you the yeah. confidence to throw a crankbait usually the chatterbait and the swim jig are king on the river but it's interesting to hear that you you had confidence in a crankbait um yeah i mean uh it's just i always i i I just have a lot of faith in a crankbait, you know. It just seems like since I've been at the Potomac, a big fish eats crankbait. Big fish eat crankbait. And uh I mean big fish eat all that stuff. But for me, I mean in my head, I have confidence in it. Um, you know, it's not like every time I go there that's what I catch them all. It's just that it's just the way it was. Like I said, it just didn't feel right. I was throwing a chatterbait, I was throwing a swim jig, just didn't feel right, you know. So I was throwing a crankbait. You What's know? your crankbait and, uh, setup for the river? Different. Do you do you throw it on braid? Do you throw it on mono, fluorocarbon? What's I, your setup? I throw it on a uh, fifteen pound big game. Damn. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's I, throw on, I throw it on fifteen pound big game. I mean, I don't know about a lot of people, but. I mean, over the years, I mean, I, I've taken a lot of rash from some of my partners and stuff about uh, traveling big games and stuff like that. But, I mean, that's what I flip with, too. My flipping stick has 20-pound big game on it. And that, that 412, that's what I've whacked it on. I mean, it was going ape shit. It was short line. It, 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 you know, I just have confidence in it. I, I, you know, I used big game on all that stuff. Compared to Kerr and Lake Erie, how ha- how do you deal with boat pressure mentally? Because spoiler warning, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of secret spots that win on the Potomac. It's pretty much the the big ones that win there, creek wise. And there's always right. some boats. You're always around a boat. Um, we've always sure. joked in my group. It's like if you don't see a boat, you're either going to win or you're going to finish dead last. It's one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how people always tell you, you know, like when I first started going on the Potomac and, you know, learning or before I even went, you know, asking guys that have been there, you know, what they're like, if you're not around the boats, you're not around the fish. I'm sure you've heard that, you know, it's like, oh, yes. and a lot of that's true. Like in the spring, I mean, you know, like yeah. a quiet, I mean, I've been down in a quiet in that grass bed out, out by the beach. I've been down there 60, 70 boats in that mm. grass bed. You're like, holy crap, you know? You know, you hear about, you know, you just have to, you know, I mean, there's been, there's been times down there, like I usually do something a little different, you know, it really, uh, just like a lot of the, the, the tournaments I've wanted, like say a choir in the spring and there's boats everywhere. And, you know, I just do a little, little technique that I use on these bedding smallmouth that I've, that I've developed yeah. over 30 years, you know, and uh, I'm just sitting and they're just catching them and catching them and catching them. You know, I've been down there before where, you know, you'll see one here or one there getting caught, and I'm, you know, you know. Yeah, and that's the master level you got to do is understand that there's a reason Matter Woman, Belmont, and Aquia have them. That's their spawning ground. You have to be there. You just have to do something sneaky within the group. But the idea yeah. that you're going to run to, to Nanjamoin or somewhere crazy and, and, and do well, that's just, you, you got to suck it up and just figure out that difference yeah. within the difference. Yeah, and, agreed. Absolutely. You're, exa- you're exactly right. Like I said, because you'll see some guys out there, you know, they're throwing chatterbaits, rouse traps, stuff like that. And, and and then the guy's flipping, you know, like, you know, they're spawning, you know, they're on beds on there, you know, and you'll see the guys with a big jig, a flipping stick, you know, just pull them on through and just flipping every hole, whoosh, you know, down jig a couple times, reel it up, whoosh, you know, it's like, you know, just, it's hard to catch them like that, you know, especially down there. They see so much boat traffic. Yeah. They see so many trolling motors rolling over their heads and stuff like that, you know, they're not stupid. What yeah, fish get more before. pressure? Is it the Potomac or Lake Erie? Because Lake Erie, you think like that's an ocean. They don't get any boat pressure or fishing pressure. It's such a big area. Well, right now they do. Because really? right now, right now they're all up shallow spawn. And you gotta see. You should see. I'd love to show, just to show you some pictures like with this weekend. I was just up there like the last two days and uh because it was flat, calm, sunshine. The smallmouth up there, it's gin clear, and they're on beds everywhere. 
You should see the votes from like West Virginia, Tennessee, Maryland, wow. Kentucky. And they come up, you know, a bunch of guys come up. They just do it yearly, you know, every uh, like around Memorial Weekend. And there's a big small moth up there on beds. You should see. It's just, it's, it's insane. But it's so much fun. So much fun. Dude, Especially you get some yeah, things, I'm, you know. Oh, it's, it's you know, I, I got buddies, I got buddies. They should come up, uh, some of my buddies from Maryland and stuff like that come up and out in Eastern PA, you know, they come up to go fishing with me on Erie. I'm like, I'll tell you when it's on. And uh, it's on right now. Let me tell you. It's crazy. Well, boss, I thank you so much for coming on. I mean, I really appreciate it. We've covered the, the absolute gamut today. Uh, is there anyone that we can give a shout out to or anything we can promote for you? Um. We just Marine. Uh, they they uh, they take pretty good care of me with my Phoenix boat. Um, um, but that's uh, that's about it. You know, I mean, my girlfriend puts up with my crazy stuff. You know, I'm fishing all the time. And now that I'm retired, you know, that's all I want to do is fish. Now that I'm back, I mean, listen, uh, it it wasn't that long ago where I was, you know, still just trying to get. You know, trying to go to the gym and trying to push like 10 pounds and stuff like that because it was just, it, it was horrible. But she put up with my stuff and she's good with me just like going fishing. So um, I got to give a shout out to her. She puts up with my stuff and takes care of stuff while I'm going. Awesome stuff. Sir, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. As always, guys, link in the episode description to everything that we talked about. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us out in the algorithm. And also check us out on Patreon. We are getting close to our next major milestone Patreon. Check us out with a ton of great benefits. And we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.